Hey there, Leo, and welcome to your November 2019 Creativity Tarot Reading. My name is Kaylee Jean, and welcome to my channel. As I was tuning into your energy for the month of November, I was given this impression that um, there's like a renewed sense of optimism coming through as you go into the month of November, and I feel like this is potentially going to be a really significant month for many of you. Um, one of the things that was coming through was I was I kept seeing like the word music and then I was actually hearing and it's sort of funny but I, I was hearing the song It's My Life by No Doubt <laughs> um, and it kind of made me feel like there's possibly some old music maybe from earlier in your life or a specific chapter in your life that you're sort of revisiting either at the end of October or as you go into November and it's kind of informing some things for you on maybe a conscious and even a subconscious level where the listening to or like the remembering of like melodies that you literally listen to, you know, in your past is reconnecting you with some kind of spark within you. It's reconnecting you with maybe your younger self or maybe even your inner child, depending on how far back this music goes in your life. And I feel like there's just this sense of really falling into step with what you feel is your sort of purpose at this time. And it's as a result of, like I said, something as simple as listening to music that you haven't heard in a long time or that you used to absolutely love that sort of defined you, like it defined a phase in your life. I was also getting this impression with like the music message of something auditory as well and I kept seeing like the throat chakra and kind of like an emphasis on speaking so I'm also kind of picking up that some of you may be experimenting or exploring the idea of being an oracle or of um, working with your voice or your tonality or your patterns of speech in some way and recognizing the power that you do have to communicate effectively which will help you to get your point across it'll help you to advance your intentions and your specific purpose it will basically help you get your message out there so some of you could be I mean this is so specific but it feels like some of you could be almost like working on your intonation, working on your speech rhythm, working on your persuasiveness even, and recognizing that this idea of the vibration of your voice uh, is a very real power that you have to help you manifest changes in your life is literally asking for things and speaking up and being um, kind of treating that almost like an art. And if you're a musician, Leo, and you're listening to this, your practice with your musical career or your musical hobby or your instrument is going to be on fire this month. I have to say, I feel like there's just such a strong connection with music with you guys and with the power of vibration in all levels, like vibration and resonance, which is, you know, music and the voice. So there's um, a lot in this reading. I'm really curious to see how this self-expression unfolds for you, but I really feel like this is going to be a very successful month for Leo. So let's take a look at your cards. Leo, Leo, you must clear loving and your guidance for you. There we go, Leo. Okay. And we're also going to take a look at your Animal Spirit Oracle cards. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at your path. We have the Crocodile, and the Influence card is the Camel. Interesting how these are both Knight cards. And I could see these creatures living in a similar environment, for example, near the Nile. Um, there's something very mysterious about both of these cards and, and the way that they've come up together. Um, 
I want to talk first about the crocodile as your path because I feel like this card is very emblematic of the Mercury retrograde in Scorpio that we have throughout the month of November. Mercury is going to be in Scorpio the entire month during the whole retrograde period. He's not going to be making any hard aspects to any other planets. So it's a very internal time. It's a very deep time. And for you, this is happening in Scorpio, which means that symbolically it's in your fourth house. Um, Leos are Scorpios at home and Tauruses when it comes to their career, <laughs> um, just in a very general symbolic way. So having this energy in Scorpio, um, the Mercury retrograde, without hard aspects, showing that there's a lot of deep inner reflection going on, but that it can actually feel quite smooth and deep and internal and introspective without a whole lot of excess complications, you know, along with that, I feel like this could potentially be a very creative time for you with the crocodile. Um, this is a card of waiting. This is a card of not rushing into things. It's a card of really knowing that there's a rhythm and there's a timing to everything. So you may feel throughout this month um, there's that there's like an energy overwhelmingly of preparation. And maybe as the sun moves into Sag on the 22nd, you could feel like after that, there could be more of a time to strike or there could be more of a time for you to take action on something. But leading up to that, I feel like you're more in the crocodile energy where you're sort of hanging back, you're looking within, you're taking care of yourself, you're maybe doing creative work behind the scenes. For example, if you're an author, you could be focusing a lot on writing as opposed to on marketing your books and doing, you know, interviews and all that kind of stuff. Like every creative path has different different phases on it and there's going to be different emotional needs and different um, project oriented needs that we can fulfill and I feel like if you can the best use of this month is actually going to be in the behind the scenes stuff in the deep work of actually creating your work or generating ideas or even editing and things like that but it's a very private month for everybody and just seeing the fact that um, the crocodile energy showing up as your path it's it's not surprising now the influence card is the camel which to me speaks a lot to this idea of inner trust and again trusting the timing trusting the timing of things trusting how things are unfolding putting one foot in front of the other and just being very serene about everything that you have on your plate. I really like to see this card as the influence because I feel like you're going to have a lot of peace this month, Leo. You're going to feel like you're really in touch with your purpose and it's going to make you feel like you don't have to be in a rush. You don't have to be in a hurry. It's not a competition here. It's not a contest. You're not playing a game. You know, you are walking your path. And you know that there's going to be periods of that journey where it is more about focusing on the present moment and it is more about taking things in stride and sort of being at every step, being fully present at every step. And I feel like that's really what the month of November is about, is it's about going deeper for you. It's about going within. It's about also like indulging, like I was saying before, in the music and in the things that give you immediate pleasure, immediate joy, and internal treasures, internal feelings of being uplifted. I think that's going to be really important for you this month. So make sure that you have, you know, some things planned that you can do regularly on a daily basis while you're meeting all of your other obligations that are just going to be pleasant for you and joyful and uplifting for you because I see this being an area of like major growth for you. So uh, let's take a look at your cards. We've got the Eight of Pentacles, Six of Swords, Five of Wands, Three of Wands, Two of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, the Wheel, and the Priestess, the High Priestess. So we're going out with a bang. <laughs> Major Arcana right at the end of the month. Okay.
Oh, and we have the wheel. Yeah, so this is a really interesting time. So let's, I want to talk to you about the first week and what we have here. So the Eight of Pentacles um, with the Six of Swords. So when I'm looking at this, I see like a quiet passage, basically. Um, I don't know that you are necessarily needing to end something prominent, although for some of you that could be the situation, like a small number of you. The Six of Swords can represent kind of walking away from something in your past. I mean, it's it's the Six of Swords, so it follows the Five of Swords, which is like a conflict or um, a sense of having to put up boundaries and then saying no to something. And then the Six of Swords kind of represents these people uh, who are walking away from that, for, who are walking away from a situation where there was maybe a separation or where there was a need to go their separate ways. And now we see, you know, the Six of Swords. It's like you're kind of moving on from that. So for those of you who have left an important life situation in October, we see the energies of November being a lot smoother waters for you right away and we see this sense of like a peaceful serene acceptance of your path and like where you're kind of going with things now the eight of pentacles shows that you're going to feel really good when you have something to focus on and when you have something like a need to fulfill um, there's like a need to find some sort of internal sense of self-value or significance through either being of service or through having something productive that you can sort of roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty with. I feel like there's just this immense um, gratification that comes through productivity in the beginning of November. So you're probably going to be, like I could see you, Leo, like doing whatever it is that you have to do, whether it's in your creative work or your business or um, anything along those lines. I see you kind of putting on that music and just digging right into whatever you have to do. Or maybe it's exercise. You know, you could be starting a new um, workout regimen or something that is going to be really healthy for you physically. And I see you kind of putting headphones on and just, you know, it's almost like a montage in a movie where the person is like getting their shit together and they're just listening to music and they're on the treadmill or, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, like I'm really into what I'm doing for myself right now. I'm really taking care of myself. I'm finding my groove. I am just in my flow. I'm not looking backward at anything, but I'm really looking at the present moment and I'm looking forward at my vision. And you're feeling really good. You're feeling like there's just a sense of forward motion and peace in your heart because you're able now to do more of what you feel you should be doing. So maybe whatever your decisions were in recent times that sort of opened that path for you, um, it really was about putting you in the position to live more of your purpose and to do things that bring you more joy or that um, to do things maybe professionally as well that have more meaning to you than whatever it was that you were kind of trying to accomplish before. And we do kind of see this leading us forward into the next um, set of cards for tentatively around the second week of November or the middle of the month, we have the Five of Wands and the Three of Wands. So instantly, what I saw when I looked at this, because the Five of Wands came up before the Three of Wands, I feel like there's a, a sense with these cards that a simplification is giving you a sense of order and it's giving you a sense of optimism and excitement for the future. The Five of Wands is a warning card, and I don't know for you, Leo, if you have a tendency to kind of, I mean, many Leos are quite magnanimous, generous people that really want to, um, you know, not really say no to anyone. Like, you you do have, like, a, a strong 
sense of service to the world. And so you're probably, you know, in some situations at least, it's possible that you may tend to kind of overestimate what you can potentially achieve in a specific period of time. So if somebody wants you to do something or if there's multiple opportunities um, at your disposal, you may be a particular kind of Leo that's used to kind of just saying, jumping in with both feet, and yes, I can handle it, because you have a very um, strong image of yourself. Like, you have a sense of that if something matters to you, you will show up and you will get it done, and that's a very healthy um, perspective to have, but at the same time, I feel like there's a warning here for you, Leo, in the middle of the month that says, if you take on too much, even if you're doing it with the best of intentions, even if you are just totally trying to help someone or you're trying to help yourself or you are just looking at things and assuming like, yes, I could manage all of those things in a week and a half, like I could get all of that stuff done in that amount of time. Just be careful with that, Leo, because I feel like what the cards are saying is if you try and do the five of wands, you're going to be distracted, you're going to be overwhelmed, you're going to feel like it's an uphill battle. But if you try and just do three wands, well, there's your thumbs up, there's your green light from the universe. So maybe think, and maybe for some of you, literally, there are five focus points that are your main things this month, and you're thinking, if I could just accomplish these five things in November, then it will be perfect for me, like I'll, I'll get done everything I want to get done. The reality is that for many of you, if you're thinking five, it's more likely going to be three. So just try and think like about your goals for November. If you have five or six or you know even four main goals, try and narrow it down or at least prioritize them. So there's you know top priority, second top priority, third top priority, and then fourth, fifth, sixth, you know whatever. But try and, and really discern for yourself what is actually the most important because a lot of times when we do have Mercury retrograde, especially in Scorpio, even though there's no hard aspects this month, so it's not going to be um, super challenging for most people, I do feel like it's um, the energy is going to move a little slower than you're expecting. Like, And I'm talking about your physical energy, like what you feel capable of doing. Let's say you work Monday through Friday every single week and you have plans in November to volunteer on the first weekend and then you know you're going to work your second job on the the second weekend you're going to have a second job that weekend or you're going to take the kids on a vacation like the third weekend and so if you're looking at it you might actually realize oh my gosh like the whole month is full and once you get into the energy of November, once you get really deep into that Mercury retrograde Scorpio pool <laughs> that we're all going into, you're going to be like, whoa, 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 hang on. Like, I need to get a little bit more of a break. I, need, I have this other creative project that I want to work on. I would rather spend my Saturday painting or writing than, you know, traveling around or working that day or whatever. So just try and reduce the amount of things that you're like attempting to accomplish because I think you're going to actually really benefit from having some more free time to pursue your own creative interests as opposed to fulfilling a lot of external obligations. And don't feel bad about that, Leo. Um, you, it's, and let's, ah, I just got chills because I was just remembering that song that came through um, when I was tuning into you guys, the song It's My Life <laughs> by No Doubt. And, and it is, it's like, it's your life, Leo. It's your life. So um, you got to, protect it. You got to make sure that you're able to put energy into the things that are going to actually feed you and nourish you and bring you joy because that's the only way that you can really show up and do your best for anybody else anyway. <clears throat> so no guilt. <laughs> um, the third week of November we have the Nine of Cups and the Two of Pentacles. So the Two of Pentacles comes up first um, and then we have the nine, the way that these are positioned. So when we see these cards this way, I feel like, um, for one thing, the two of pentacles can often relate to um, feeling like you're a little bit in limbo, feeling like it's a little uncertain what you're going to choose to do. 
Um, it can also, because she's juggling, it can represent situations in which we have maybe either trying to be doing too much or Leo. Maybe you are on two sides of something. Maybe you're playing both sides or you have been trying to stay in the middle of a situation where maybe other people around you have been trying to get you to either go to their side or someone else's. And you've been really doing your best to try and kind of stay in the center and show, hey, look, I'm not going to completely side with, with either of you. Like, you have to work it out on your own. There's just this sense from this card that I'm getting, particularly, particularly in this moment, that it's almost like a not my monkey or not my circus not my monkeys moment for you where in the third week of November it's actually in your best interest to kind of stay out of something and let them handle it because I don't I don't think that it's really going to serve you to feel like you want to cave in to the pressure to take a side um, I think that with the Nine of Cups, you're going to feel a lot more satisfied with the outcome of the situation, whatever it is. If you just stay in your corner and you just kind of watch what's going on, like he's just sort of smiling, you can see he's sort of smiling and he's just looking at like what's going on in the hall around him and he's not really getting involved he doesn't really feel like the need to get involved and I think that that is what is being shown with these cards is that you don't really have to get involved especially if there is a situation where it's like you know people are wanting you to but it only has to do with them and it doesn't have to do with you you're way better off just uh, letting them kind of handle it and just being like you know what that's between you guys I'm sorry I'm I'm not going to take a stand here. <laughs> like, this is not my circus, not my monkeys. So that's your message for the third week. And I actually see this as being also potentially a lucky week for some of you. So if you're considering doing something, um, you know, a little bit more uh, risky, or if you have a calculated risk that you're looking to take at some point in November, I would say between... Um, like the 23rd, 24th, maybe somewhere around there, could be really nice for you because um, the Nine of Cups is coming up here, and we also are going to have the Sun moving into Sagittarius on the 22nd. Mercury will also be direct at that time. He'll still be in Scorpio, but he'll be direct. So there will just be more forward motion energy. And then also as the sun moves into um, Sagittarius, he's going to be trining any points that you have in Leo. So there's going to definitely be a shift in the energy at that point, And you're probably going to be feeling that. So if there is some kind of risk-taking behavior that you know you're going to do in a calculated way, or you want to maybe publish something, put something out there, Potentially, if you're ready and if it feels right at that time, it could be really successful. Okay, so the end of the month, we have the Wheel um, the wheel of Fortune, which this deck just calls the Wheel. This is the Druid Craft Tarot, and we also have the High Priestess. So what I'm getting from this is actually um, the Sacred Circle. So I feel like it's possible that you, Leo, could be engaging in some kind of sacred ceremony at the end of the month. There could also be, at the end of November, a group that you may be joining that does sacred um, work, that does maybe spiritual work, uh, casting circles, casting a magic circle, um, casting a circle of protection. All of these things are sort of coming through as potentially relevant themes. You may be attending, like I said before, an event where there are... Um, like a cer there are ceremonies being held or there's something, some kind of alchemical learning that is being engaged in with the high priestess. She can represent hidden knowledge and she can represent ceremony as well. We do have um, the new moon in Sagittarius on the 26th. And so this could really be pointing to that. And it could be saying that on that new moon in Sagittarius, you could be feeling really spiritually connected, very connected to your higher self, Leo, very connected to your divine self, and maybe experiencing some kind of new beginning when it comes to your spiritual orientations in life. So that looks really, really good. I feel like that new moon in Sag is going to be a really nice time for you. Um, let's take a look at an oracle message for you, Leo. Wow, we have strength. And I feel like you need another card with that because I feel like there's 
um, more of a message here. Strength and compassion. Oh, that is really sweet. So, um, when we look at this in connection to your spirit animal oracle cards um, with the camel and the crocodile, I feel like the camel really is a, a good archetype um, or a good archetypal symbol for inner strength. Because, and even like when I look at these together, yeah, like these belong together. These are all part of the same message. There's something for you, Leo, about like a quiet strength this month. There's something about really tapping in to your own like kind of calm, gentle sense of your roots, your spiritual roots, you know, um, being in self. There's something that feels really different when you're doing um, inner work, for example, working with your inner child or connecting to different aspects of yourself. But there's also a place that you can go to kind of when you're into working on yourself um, that just feels like the center, you know? It just feels like the combination, it's the central point around which all of the other facets of you are sort of orbiting. And I feel like in November, you're really connected to that. You're really finding that center and being more aware of it in more of like a visceral and immediate kind of way. And I feel like what radiates from you when you, Leo, are in your center um, is strength and compassion. This is that quiet strength that I was talking about. This is that spiritual strength of being able to like witness yourself in everybody that you meet and at the same time see the divine in yourself and everyone that you meet. So you're way more able to understand the motivations that people have around you and you're way more able to be compassionate and understanding of where those people are coming from. It doesn't mean that you won't have to set boundaries or that you know you won't have to have conversations or anything like that, but there's just this energy to you this month where you're radiating this gentle strength, this quiet strength, where you're not needing validation from other people. In fact, if anything, you are validating other people because you are radiating compassion. You're radiating this sense of I get you. I can I may not know like what your experience is. I haven't walked in your shoes, but like we're both human and um I just I get it. Like there's a, something that goes deeper about your ability to kind of read other people this month. So again, it could be a really good time with the camel as well. If you find Leo, if you have some placements like in Gemini, let's say, or if you have some um, kind of more hyperactive elements in your chart and in your personality that cause you to feel a little bit more anxious, like for example in social situations, I don't feel like you're going to have that issue as much this month, Leo. I feel like you are showing up as um, somebody with strength. You're showing up as somebody with an in a genuine internal calmness that is going to make other people around you feel more comfortable just naturally because you're going to be able to when you are strong in yourself that's when you can genuinely have compassion for other people we can't really genuinely be compassionate with other people if we're not rooted in ourselves um, because the strength that we are drawing on internally is what gives us the ability to express compassion in a balanced way. You know, it's what keeps us from being like total, absolute overgivers or just surrendering all the time to what everybody else wants and not having our own voice. Like, this is balanced compassion. This isn't like a struggle, you know? Um, it's, it's natural. 
So I feel like this is a really beautiful month for Leos. Um, I hope that this reading has given you something exciting, something to think about as you go through the month of November. Thank you so much for watching, Leo. Thank you for being here on my channel. It really just is amazing to me that you watch my videos. So if you're still here with me at the end of this reading, please go ahead and leave me a little like lion face emoji or a feline like a cat emoji and let me know that you're here. If of course you want to share a little bit about like your life and how this reading may have connected, if there was a message or two in here that really made sense to you, please let me know in the comments. I absolutely love hearing from you guys and the way that this channel is set up on YouTube is such that, you know, when you leave comments and when you give this video a thumbs up and you subscribe to my channel, it really does help with my channel's overall growth and it really helps me to know that like there's activity on here and that you guys actually want to hear from me, which is like the biggest motivation and it just touches my heart every single month. I'm getting like a little bit teary eyed just even thinking about it because it just gives what I do meaning and it's such um, it's such a beautiful thing to feel that w the effort that I'm putting into these readings actually like is healing in some way for you or gives you some kind of optimism or hope or gives you um, some clarity on something. It just really touches my heart every time that you let me know that. So thank you so much for liking this video, subscribing, leaving me a comment. Um, all of those things really do make a huge difference for me. And um, if you feel called to donate to support my channel, I will also put the link to that below. Next month I will be coming out with your 2020 year ahead forecast, which is pretty intensive. It represents a lot of work for me every month, or I mean every year that I do that, and then I'm adding this on um, to my normal workload with the YouTube videos, the monthly ones. So it's going to be pretty involved for me. So if you feel called, if you want to say thank you, if you get something useful out of these videos, um, please go ahead and consider donating, and I'll put that information below. Thank you so much for being here, Leo. I am sending you such a big hug. I hope that you have an amazing month in November. I love you guys, and I will talk to you next month. Bye.